Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Well, if you love Jesus, say hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Well, we're so glad to see all of your smiling faces. Glory to God. Thank you so much for coming out and being with us tonight. Um, I believe God's got a good word for you tonight, and uh, I believe that uh, you're going to be blessed, and I want you to believe the same thing too, amen? amen? I want you to go ahead and get your expectations up, uh, set your, set your, go ahead and send out your, your faith, faith rod and reel and, and hook up onto me and pull me, glory to God, by faith. Because I believe some needs are going to be met in here tonight. I believe a word's going to be spoken to you in, in season. I believe it's going to be a, a fresh, hot, tasty word tonight. Amen. You know, it's, it's, always, it's always good when the meal is fresh and hot. Amen. Yeah. You know, unless you're eating ice cream, you know. But it's always good when the meal is hot and fresh. Amen. Not stale and warmed over. And it's been, you know, you go to K&W and they scraping your macaroni out the bottom of the pan. You're like, oh, I don't want that. I think I'm going to wait for that fresh to come out. Amen. Well, believe you me, God's got some fresh for you tonight. Amen. Amen. Some fresh oil, some fresh anointing. Hallelujah. Some fresh, some freshness coming your way tonight. Some refresh, refreshing coming your way tonight. Amen. How many can be in agreement with me for that tonight? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And I want you to depend on the Holy Spirit to minister to your needs tonight. Amen. You know, everybody's got needs, everybody's got situations and circumstances that are going on in their life that they need answers for. And the way you get those answers is by yielding yourself to the Spirit of God. It says, it says the Word of God says, if, you, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all men liberally and upbraids not, which means doesn't hold anything back. Amen? But the first thing you must do is you must be willing and you must be open, you must be yielded, and you must be willing and ask. Amen? Amen. So by, by your uh, attendance here tonight, I believe that there's a, there's a hunger and a desire in your heart to, uh, to hear a word from the Lord tonight. You know, you could have been anywhere tonight. Amen? You could have went, you know, to Cold Stone or something, you know, and, you know, been in, that, been in the ice cream. Amen? You know, you could have went to your neighbor's house or something like that, or you could have been at home watching TV, watching the uh, you know, whatever program is on tonight, you know, but I thank God that you are here, and I believe, I'm believing God for you and with you that you're going to receive a word in season tonight. Amen? Amen. All right, so before we start, we're going to go to the throne of grace and ask God to bless this word. Amen? Amen? Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for this opportunity to minister your word tonight. Father, I thank you that, that uh, my lips are as the pen of a ready writer. And, Father, I just thank you right now that, that a word will go forth in season. Father, I pray that every need of this household be met, whether it be financial, whether it be physical, whether it be mental, whatever the need is, Father, you know all needs, and you meet all needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And so I ask you in the name of Jesus, Father, just, just work, work through me, work in me, process words through my mouth, process thoughts, thoughts through my mind so that your word can come forth with boldness and power. And Satan, right now, we serve notice on you. We bind you on every hand. You have no authority in this place. We, rend we, we bind you. We rend render you harmless, ineffective, and unfruitful. And we command you to leave and stop any activities that you may have started. And we come against you now, and we just give the name of Jesus the highest praise in this place. And Father, I just thank you right now that your word is, is rich and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow. It is the discerner of thoughts and the intents of the heart. And so, Father, as this word goes forth, we thank you for it in advance. In Jesus' name. And everybody in agree with that prayer said, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, you know, to, to those of you who are visiting with us for the first time, you kind of uh, catching 
uh, part five of our uh, series lesson that we've been uh, getting into, and it's been very, very good, very, very rich, uh, very, very anointed, and uh, not because of me, you know, not not because of me, because of the Word of God, Amen. The anointing is on the Word, Amen. amen. And so we've been uh, been in the Word of God talking about becoming a vessel unto honor, uh, becoming a vessel that God can use, Amen. And of course, this 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 lesson, this uh, series of messages, is for um, what I would call the mature Christian, because everybody, everybody, everybody that's saved and born again is not necessarily trying to become a vessel that God can use. And of course, we'll be talking about some of those things. And uh, I just, I just know that you're going to be blessed. And uh, we'll try to, we'll try to do some recap. But uh, you know, the the messages have been recorded, so if you want to take advantage of those, of course, uh, you can see someone in our bookstore, and I'm sure those things can be made available to you. Um, but we're going to start off, let's turn in your Bible, if you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn in your Bibles to uh, 2 Timothy, the second chapter, 20th verse. And uh, we're going to be reading out of the, uh, some of this is going to, we'll, we'll come back to the King James Version, but we're going to start off in the New Living Translation, because it gives a little more clarity, I believe. Um, sometimes the uh, King's English can be a little murky and you, it kind of leaves you like wondering, well, what does that really mean, you know? But uh, I believe that, you know, there are, there are different translations that kind of give you an expanded view of what the scripture is saying. Not that you're supposed to put your reliance on other translations, but you want to use the translation that has the least amount of fat and excess in it, I would say. But if you have your Bibles, uh, I'm sorry, it's yeah, it's 2 Timothy 2.19. 2 Timothy 2.19. It says, But God's truth stands firm like a foundation stone with this inscription, The Lord knows who are his, and all who belong to the Lord must turn away from evil. In a wealthy home, some utensils are made of gold and silver, and some are made of wood and clay. The expensive utensils are used for special occasions, and the cheap ones are for everyday use. If you keep yourself pure, you will be a special utensil for honorable use. Your life will be clean, and you will be ready for the master to use you for every good work. Run from anything that stimulates youthful lust. Instead, pursue righteous living, faithfulness, love, and peace. Enjoy the companionship of those who call on the Lord with pure hearts. So let's, let's turn in our Bibles here. Let's, I'm going to read that out of the King James Version. And then we're going to expand on it a little bit. And uh, glory to God, it's going to be good. 2 Timothy 2, 20. Oh, let me put my reading glasses on. You know, I just acquired these reading glasses. You know, my, eye, my eyes have been telling me for uh, some period of time now that you can't see stuff up real close to read. And, of course, I tried my best. You know, sometimes you just you get into a, a place where you think you're in faith, and you're just, you're just not. You know, because I'm sitting here trying to read. I'm like, in the name of Jesus, I just, I just woo. In the name of Jesus, I just bind that up. I Thank you, Lord. My eyes are healed in Jesus' name. You know, and, you, and you're just thinking to yourself, you know, I'm, I'm being faith for my eyes to, to be clear. Well, I, I could have just went and got some reading glasses and, and just saved my faith for something else. <laughs> you know, sometimes we got our faith working on stuff, and, you know, you could just, you, you, you know, yes, you still want to keep your faith out there on everything. Amen. Jesus is the healer. Jesus will heal your eyes. He will. But in the meantime, get you some reading glasses you know see there's, there's 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 the manward side and then there's the godward side amen and both of them come together make an explosive force for god that's a i coined that phrase from uh from pastor hagan and uh out in oklahoma and he says you know the there's the man side and there's the god side and they both come together make an explosive force explosive force for god amen, amen. but um you know my eyes started changing. I'm 45 years old and my eyes started changing, you know, but I think I'm going to be in faith, you know, but 
you know, the eye doctor said, well, you know, you can still be in faith, but, you know, but in the meantime, I'm going to give you this prescription. So, so, so I went and got me some reading glasses, and so, you know, I don't have to do this. You know, I can, I can, I can see just fine if my arms are out like this. I can say, like, yeah, I see it just great, you know. But, you know, I do like this, and blah, 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 blah. No, can't see. But anyway, praise the Lord. Let's read our scripture. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself, <clears throat> if a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Flee youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, with them that call on the name of the Lord out of a pure heart. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. So we're talking about becoming a vessel that God can use. Now I can see y'all. See, I see just fine without my glasses. You know, I see y'all. I, I put my glasses on. I can't see nobody. Everybody's like, ooh. <laughs> you know, you, you get old. You start getting older. You start, you know, your body starts changing and stuff. You know, you know it's, it's interesting. You know, you don't necessarily like all the changes, but, you know, you're like, it's something to get used to. But praise the Lord. Thank God for reading glasses. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we're talking about becoming a vessel unto honor becoming a vessel that God can use. Now, as, we, as we've talked about in some of our earlier messages, you are a human vessel. You and I are human vessels. We are much like this drinking glass that currently has water in it. But we are unlike this glass in that this glass could not determine what was inside of it. This glass could not decide and say, well, no, I don't, I don't want water in me. I want uh, Bartles and James in me. And I want, or I want, I want uh, a, a, a Blanc wine. I want wine in me. I'm only for wine. Do not put any other thing in me besides wine. That, this glass cannot decide that. But you and I, as human vessels created by the Lord, can determine what goes in us. And we also can determine what comes out of us. Amen? Jesus said it this way, bitter and sweet water cannot proceed from the same fountain. And so you determine what comes in you by what you see, by what you hear. You determine what comes out of you by what you say and by what you do. And so, if we keep these things in mind and understand that the Lord made us for a purpose and that we want to be vessels that God can use, what is the thing that we need to be focusing on to put in ourselves to make us usable by the Lord? That thing that you should put in yourself is the word of God. Because if you put the word in you, it drives out ungodliness and uncleanness and all those things that would keep you away from doing the things of God. Amen? All right, but let me get to my notes here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But tonight, we're just kind of, we're on the same train, becoming a vessel unto honor, becoming a vessel that God can use. You know, it's the same train, different, different car. Amen. We've been changing cars, but we're, stuck, we're on the same train, but we're hooking up to a different car. So the car we're going to be in tonight is called sanctification. Amen. So we want to talk about being sanctified. Amen. Being set apart so that we can be used by the master. Amen. In Vines, the expository dictionary uh, it talks about sanctification, defines sanctification as that relationship with God into which men enter by faith in Christ. Acts 26, 18 talks about this in 1 Corinthians 6 and 11. It also says sanctification is also used in the New Testament of the separation of the believer from evil things and ways. See, see what I'm saying here? And this sanctification is God's will for the believer. 
1 Thessalonians 4 and 3 talks about this and his purpose in calling him by the gospel. Verse 7. It must be learned from God. Sanctification must be learned from God. And it must, and he teaches us by his word, as we see in uh, John 17 and 17 and verse 19. And then it's also found in Psalms. Where you go? In Psalms 119 and 9, and also 17 and 4. And it must be pursued by the believer earnestly and undeviatingly. I didn't even know that was a word, undeviatingly. But it must be pursued. Unde you must not deviate from pursuing God's word in this sanctification that we're talking about. Now it says over in 1 Timothy 2 and 15, I think you should still be there. Put my glasses on. I could quote it, but it's better to read it. Amen? 2 Timothy 2 and 15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Well, why would someone be ashamed? Or oh, what is, what is, what is you know, being ashamed? You know, being ashamed is like you, you're at the office and you're working and you're getting something off the shelf and you forgot to wear your belt that day and your pants fall down and you got this box in your hand. You're like, oh, <laughs> uh, everybody close your eyes, you know, because you are not prepared for the day, you know. Yeah, you feel a little shame after something like that, wouldn't you? Amen. So. How, well, well, how can a person in the word of God be ashamed? Well, when you don't discern the word properly. When you don't rightly discern the word. Or you, you improperly go off and find an isolated scripture and try to make it a doctrine like, you know, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. The Lord takes stuff from you. Well, no. That was an accurate statement by Job, but that's not accurate of God because God is a giver he gives and gives and gives opportunity after opportunity after opportunity who's, who's the one that steals, kills and destroys well John 10 and 10 tells us that the devil steals, kills and destroys so you know when you start examining scripture you must examine it in the light of other scripture you can't just take one scripture and say, okay, well, see, the Lord says this, you know, and then you just try to run off with it and make that, make that you know, supposed to, supposed to fit your ideology. It doesn't work like that. The Bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. So that's how you become ashamed when you take an isolated scripture and try to make it doctrine or you try to just go off on your own tangent or you had, had a word from the Lord. Yeah, I got this word from the Lord, child. It's not in the Bible, but God told me this, and I'm so sure that it was the Lord because the room started shaking, and I got this feeling of, of um, I got lightheaded. I just know it was the Lord. No, you had, you had some bad Papa John's. Because <laughs> if you can't find it in here, I can't, put, I can't put any reliance in that. Amen? I can't put any trust in that, not as a word from the Lord. You know, you have some bad Papa John's and, you know, just get you some Pepto-Bismol or some, you know, some Tums or something and let that pass. You know, you know, because you just had a, you know, it's all right. But don't try to make, make me think that you heard from the Lord. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Is God good? All and when is God good? All Hallelujah. Now, as I forestated, you know, all Christians don't want to be used by God. It's evident. It's evident that all Christians do not want to, you know, you see them in church on Sunday. You know, they, they come and they go. They, they may even show up for the, you know, the, the fundraiser, you know, and bake a few pies, you know, and they're real nice people. But, you know, that's not necessarily being used by the Lord. You were just participating. 
that does not make you want to be used by God? What, is, what makes you want to be used? What qualifies you as someone that has a desire to be used by God? Well, Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Mm. Uh-oh. A lot of Christians that don't want to do what the Lord said, you know. They want, they want to come to Jesus, you know, for a fire suit, you know, keep going, keep going to hell, you know. But then, you know, all the time up to that, you know, I'm going to live any kind of way I want to live because, you know, God is love and he won't judge me and, you know, I can just do what I want to do. No, you cannot. No, you cannot. Can't do it. He said, because there will be many in that day. He said, many. He didn't say just a couple. He said, there's going to be many in that day that say, Lord, you know, we've done all this great stuff for you. You know, we built this church. You know, we baked pies. You know, um, we prophesied. And we did all this. I, I gave my neighbor a ride to church. And you do it. And all that's good. But he's going to say, depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. I never knew you. Because you didn't keep my word on the inside of you and do it. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Tell your face you're happy. Smile. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now there's a standard in place that disqualifies a lot of Christians from being used. Example. You know, I know, I know a gentleman and uh, he, wanted, he wanted me to introduce him to a certain young lady. And uh, and uh, he, he didn't want to marry her, though. He wasn't, he wasn't trying to find a wife. You know. And he's all interested in her and, you know, interested, well, wh wh what's she shaped like? And, you know, uh, what's she look like? You know, just the, just the physical attributes and stuff. You know, I'm like, I'm like, uh, and then, of course, on, on, on her side of things, well, she was, you know, she wasn't spotless either. Of course, well, you know, who is, but you know, she's already involved with somebody that's married. And I'm like, and I know both, I know both scenarios, and I'm like, mm, no, nah, I can't be a part of that. So, you know, but both are Christians. One is a deacon in their church. And, you know, in math, you know, two negatives coming together makes a positive, right? You know, that's, but that's only in math. You can't do that in real life. Because if you put these two negatives together, it's going to blow up like dynamite and fire. Amen? And then get, who gets the blame? Me. Because you told them that, the, oh, they'd be good for you. You know, yeah, go ahead and call them up. Yeah, y'all y'all, y'all see if y'all can work it out. You know? No. That won't be me. Because then the Lord will call me on the carpet in that great getting up morning. Jeff. You know you shouldn't have introduced them folks together. That was, a, that was one of the reasons why they couldn't be here now. Because you introduced them. I ain't going to have that on my slate. No, I couldn't be part of that mess. God holds us responsible. I was not going to be responsible for joining these two together. No, can't do it. Can't do it. Although I love both of them. You know, I just, you know, y'all going to have to work some things out. You know, separately. You know. But when you want to be used of God... Your daily goal should be, now listen closely, to draw closer to the things that God loves and to put more distance and disdain between you and what God hates. Turn in your Bibles to 1 John 2, 15. First John 2, 15. I'm going to the book of John. Look at me. 1 John 2 and 15. And it says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. All right, let's look over at Ephesians 4 and 29. We're talking about becoming a vessel unto honor. We're talking about sanctification, being set aside for the, for the master to use you. Ephesians 4 and 29.
and it reads, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not, the 30th verse says, grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Now, here's how you, here, you just see here how you are sanctifying yourself by how you talk. You're being sanctified by your speech. You know, you're not, you're not sanctified when you're still making those little, you know, those little slight snide comments and, you know, getting people told, <laughs> you know. You know, some people, they just, they just expert. You know, they just, they just wait for somebody to cross them wrong because they get you told quick. They will let you know that you have crossed the line and now I'm about to slice you about seven, eight different ways with my tongue. You know, but the Bible says here that, that we're not to let these corrupt things come out of our mouth. You know, we're supposed to be edifying and uplifting and, and, and your words ought to minister grace to the people that are listening to you. And if you slicing them up seven, eight different ways, that's not too much grace coming your way. Amen? Amen. But see, these things, these things are not for the adolescent, immature Christian. And see, that's nobody in here. I believe that the folks in here are ready to be used by God, and we're going to take this word and we're going to run with it. Amen? Amen. We're going to learn how to talk to one another. Amen? Amen? Amen. Jesus said it this way. He said, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one toward another. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. We need to walk in love towards one another. Amen. Amen. And not just get, a, get, get somebody told, you know. Say, I knew she was going, I knew she was going to come, come in here with that. I, I, I set her straight, though. Huh. She had to go in that bathroom and regroup after I finished with her. Shame on you. Big time Christian. You was just shouting, shouting and danced all the naps out the carpet a couple days ago. And now you just done tore this sister down and they, and they, and they can't get back to work right. Mm. Don't shout me down in this Holy Ghost church. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell your face you're happy. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. This is tight, but it's right now. Come on now. We're going to help somebody up in this Holy Ghost church tonight. Glory to God. Keep your integrity. We talk about keeping your integrity as a part of sanctification. Don't strive to be relevant. Don't lower your standards to be accepted. You stay, you stay, you stay, you stay in that in that circle with God. You got you got strong back up. Amen. 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 You got strong back up when you stand with God. When you stand on His side, now the world will tell you something different. The world will mount up all the all the hate and muster and muster all the hate against you, and you know they have you on CNN, Fox, and CBN, and everything. They say we 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 hate so and so. You know so and so is bad. But the Bible says, if God be for you, who can be against you? Hallelujah. I like being on Jesus' team. Amen? Amen. He is undefeated. Yes. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory to God. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, Jesus ministered to all men without becoming like all men. Jesus lived as a man in the flesh and did not live his life according to the flesh. And who is our example? Jesus is our example. Amen. And so as he has done, we can do likewise. Amen. Hallelujah. Turning your Bibles to Matthew 16 and 13. We're flipping through the scriptures. I hope you hope you got your pens and papers out. And you're taking good notes. Like to tell you in school, you will be tested on this material. Amen? Because tomorrow is coming, and you might be tested as soon as you leave out in the parking lot. 
So take good notes because it's going to benefit you because the test is coming. Because anytime you give up the lesson, at some point you're going to have a test. Amen. But you are equipped to pass. Amen. With flying colors. Because Jesus has already procured the, procured the victory for you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. amen. <clears throat> Matthew 16 and 13. And glasses. <clears throat> When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Hallelujah. Jesus asked his disciples, Who do the people say that I was? Who do, who do people say that I am? Did Je was Jesus insecure about who he was? I think not. Well, what, why did he ask that question? Why did Jesus ask his disciples... What did people say about me? Jesus asked the disciples this question because it is important to have your good name wherever you go. That is the one thing that will follow you and precede you in life, your good name or your bad name. I bring up certain names and you immediately think something good or you immediately think something bad. Amen? I could say Muhammad Ali. Some of you think one thing. Some of you think something else. I say Adolf Hitler. Some of you think one thing. Some of you think something else. You know, because of who that person was and what they represented. And the things that they said and did in the earth. And so Jesus is letting us know that it is important for you to have a good name. To have your integrity. And when he asked them, their answers were not, well, Lord, some, some say that you're a pimp. <laughs> no. No. Well, Lord, you know, you was ministering to the alcoholics and the, and the people down at the bar, and some of them say you was an alcoholic. No. No. Or, well, Lord, some of them say you're just a slacker because, you know, all you do is walk around and preach. And, you know, you don't, you don't do no work or nothing. No. No, no, no. Jesus conducted himself in such a way that his integrity was never questioned. He carried himself in such a way that it was unmistakable what he was and who he was. Amen. Amen. And that's what that's our example. We ought, to, we ought to be striving daily to follow this example of integrity that, integrity that Jesus set before us. So when people bring up our name, it's, a, it's, it's honorable things that are said. You know, not, you know, oh, psst, that dude, you know. You know, you don't want that said about you. You don't want, you don't want people to just kind of, you know, People just chuckling under their breath, you know. <laughs> ah, they so stupid. You don't want that said about you. Amen? But you, but you have already established that in how you act and how you talk and how you carry yourself, you know. But, you know, we can change that. We can change that. Amen? Starting today, starting right now. Start putting this word in you and purposing within yourself, I'm going to do what this word say. And day by day, little by little, you'll begin to change on the inside. And it will reflect on the outside. Amen? You know, you're still drawing breath. It's not too late for you to change. Just because you might be 70 years old, it's still not too late for you to change. Amen? Now, some people, they ain't going to let you, they ain't going to let the past go. 
But that's their problem. That's right. Amen? The Bible says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. When you are in Christ, those old things pass away. God don't remember that stuff no more. It's folks like me and you that remember that stuff. Amen? But if we're, if we're following Christ's example, we're going to forget those things which are behind. And, of course, you know, you just don't jump up and trust somebody just because they say, I'm in Christ now. Oh, I trust you wholeheartedly now. No, 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 I ain't say be stupid now. <laughs> Amen. We're not talking about stupidity. Because, you know, you, you've, been, you've been the top criminal for 30 years, and now you say I'm saved. I, 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 can't, just, I can't take you at face value yet, you know. There, there has to be some time in here where we see your, see your words and see your actions and watch your life for a little while, and then we can put some trust and reliance in you, you know, after a time. But, you know, when we are in Christ, nothing's impossible. Amen? And you can build up your integrity. Amen? Because you are sanctifying yourself. You are, we are becoming vessels unto honor. We are becoming vessels that God can use. And we are sanctifying ourselves so that God can use us. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. All right, so turning your Bibles to John 4 and 17. I think we're getting close here. John 4 and 17. Hallelujah. Now, this, we're talking about talking. Uh, we're looking at the uh, at Jesus and the woman at the well. Let's go up to. Let's go to four and seven. Let's start at seven verse. Now, uh, let's go up to the sixth verse. So now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour, and there cometh a woman. Of Samaria to draw water. And Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away into the city to buy meat. They went, they went down to uh, they went to Burger King and get a value meal or something. And then the woman said unto Samaria unto him, How is it that thou being a Jew askest me, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. And Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith unto thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him that he would have given thee living water. Now, you know, as we're, as we're starting to examine this passage of Scripture here, you know, this woman is kind of like, you know, Jesus is trying to mack or something. Because, you know, she's got this little slant on what she's talking about, you know. So she's thinking Jesus is, is trying to run some game on her, trying to, trying to get the hook up or something, you know. Because she's got this little spin on her, her, you know, why are you talking to me? Y'all don't talk to us, you know. You just sitting here chilling, and I'm coming, I'm trying to get some water and everything. You, you, you trying to mack? Why you, don't be talking to me. And Jesus, Jesus just get ready to read her mail. She don't even know it. That the woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with. Why are you at this well? And said, and The well is deep. From whence then hast thou the living water? How you get some living water? You ain't got, you ain't got bucket nor cup. And how you got some living water? That's essentially what she's saying. Said, so Art thou greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank there, thereof himself and his children and his cattle. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. He's pointing to the well. He said, But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. 
you know, she's thinking, you know, I'm, I'm going to get me a lifetime supply of the, 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 the blue water brand or something. You know, I'm going to get some Dasani. You must have some Dasani water somewhere. I need to get the hookup. And the woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus said unto her, Go, call thy husband. Now it's male time. And come hither. And the woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said. You're right. You don't have a husband. Thou have, for thou hast had five husbands. You get surround. And he and he whom thou hast is not thy husband, in that saidest thou truly. So now, you know, he, he done read, he pulled a mail out on him, and now we done changed this conversation around. She, she ain't got this little attitude no more. Uh, 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 <clears throat> the woman answered and said, I, uh, the woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive thou art a prophet. You must be a prophet. Oh, so now I'm a prophet now, huh? Our father worship in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is a place where men ought to worship. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. You say, you know, you don't, you don't, you, you don't have a clue what's about to happen here. You know, y'all don't have a covenant. Y'all don't know. Y'all don't know nothing about this, this God that we we serve. He said, but let me tell you something. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. So he he just done, he just done wiped all this attitude. Out of the conversation. And pulled your mail out. Wiped all this attitude off of you. And now it's time to get real with it. The woman said unto him. I know that Messiah cometh. Which is called Christ. When he is come. He will tell us all things. Jesus said unto her. I that speak unto thee am he. And upon this came his disciples. And marveled. And that he talked with the woman. Because, you know, they don't have any dealings with the Samaritans. Yet no man said, what seekest thou? Or what talkest thou with her? Because they knew what Jesus was about. They didn't always understand what Jesus did. But they, they knew his integrity. Because they walked with him day and night. They slept with Jesus. They saw, they, they was watching Jesus. When Jesus wasn't necessarily worried and watching. Because you know how folks are. You know, somebody, you know, is your road dog. You know, they, they know everything about you. They know when you've been to the bathroom. They know what you smell like. You know. Because you're all tight. So these disciples were very close to Jesus. And they watched him. But see, they didn't get all bent out of sorts. They wasn't like talking, man, Jesus trying to mack. Look at him. No. They weren't doing all that because they knew Jesus' integrity. They watched him. They knew what he was doing. Let me get my place here. And glasses. And upon this came his disciples, and they marveled and talked with them, and that he talked with the woman. Yet no man said, What seekest thou, or what talkest thou with her? And the woman left her water pot. Man, she just got. She lost her cool. She said, man, this, this, this guy know everything. I got to, I, 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 I got to, I, I, I got to get right. Come and see. And said, so the woman left her water pot and went her way into the city and said to the, and saith to the men, I guess all the men that she was, used to be with. Because, you know, she was with at least five, six dudes. They ain't saying all of them were dead either. You know. So they were probably still in the city. And she's, she's like, look, we got a prophet in our midst. We got somebody to know God in our midst. Y'all need to come check him out. And she was so convincing that they had a two-day revival in that city. 
Come to hear Jesus. Come hear Jesus. Come hear Jesus. Off this one lady. They followed him. They said, I, I, you know, I heard what she said, but now I want to hear what you're saying. And that's the way it ought to be with us. Because Jesus is our example, right? We ought to be so fired up in the things of God that when we talk and we say, man, you ought to come to my church. Man, you ought to, you ought to get in this word. You ought to study this word because it's good. Amen? We ought to put such an impact on people that they are like, yes, I will. I will. And then follow up on it. Amen? Praise the Lord. Somebody say hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, when Jesus ministered to the, to the woman at the well, he was not trying to run game or set something up for later that night. We don't have any indication of whether or not that woman was a beauty or not, but we do know that she had laid up at least with several different men in the community. But Jesus made such a great impact on this lady that it was evident because the same lady caused a revival to break out in her city because of their conversation. Hallelujah. Now there are a lot, and I do mean a lot, of so-called Christians sitting in church trying to run game. Some of you may know some of them. You know, they, they brother so-and-so, they deacon so-and-so, but on Sunday morning, but Saturday night, they were doing something totally different than praise the Lord. But, you know, we're not encouraging you to be like them. No, no, no. No, no, no. We're encouraging you to sanctify yourself and be holy before the Lord. Amen? Amen. People like this trying to run game and stuff like that, they can't be used by God. They are disqualified. Their dance card is already full for the devil. You know, the da dance card is kind of an old saying. I guess in the 30s and 40s, they used to have dances and stuff, you know, and they used to, you know, go and ask the, the gentleman would go and ask the ladies to dance, and they would have like a little card. Well, I can dance, so, you know, they were playing music, live music and stuff, and they're like, well, I will dance with you, you know, and they have, have a literal card. They have guys lined up like, oh, I'm supposed to dance with Johnny after the, next song and then I'm supposed to dance with Jim um, after that song and I think I can get you at about the fifth song okay because a dance call was full and that's how some Christians are they can't do anything for the Lord because they're dancing with the devil Amen. all the time they doing they doing the two-step with the devil can't get them away from the devil they happy dancing with the devil but guess what? There's going to come a time. There's going to come a time. Hallelujah. Jesus is going to top the sky and this whole thing going to be over with. And those folks dancing with the devil are going to hear that, hear that skirt as a needle go across the record. It's up. The jig is up. It's going to be crying time then. But those of you who have made Jesus your Lord and Savior and have put your trust and reliance in him, it's going to be a great getting up morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to shout heaven over. Glory to God. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Now, you know, people are being, you know, people are being put in positions in church just because they're on their regular attendance. Or sometimes they get put in position just because they're a family member or something like that. You know, we need somebody to do, you know, we need, we need another deacon and so-and-so doesn't come about four Sundays, so we can put them as a deacon. Really? So soon. You know, just like I was telling you earlier about the, about the brother that wanted to meet the sister, and, you know, and one of them's a deacon and whatnot, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, did anyone in leadership in that church give a pause to say, you know, are we doing this? the way the Bible has set forth for us to do this? Well, what is the way that a person should be installed in leadership? I'm glad you asked. Let's take a look. It's found over in Timothy. Mm -mm 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 -mm. 
1 Timothy 3. What should be the qualifications of a person becoming leadership in the church? You know, because, you know, to look at some churches, you know, they don't have no pattern of what, they don't have no idea of what's written here. Because they just put anybody in position. And you can tell because you see them living any kind of way too. 1 Timothy 3. This is a true saying. If a man desire, 3-1, 1, 1 Timothy 3 and 1. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desire a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, and apt to teach. Not given to wine, no striker, not greedy, or filthy lucre, but patient, and not a brawler or covetous. One that ruled his own house, having his children in subjection, with gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, hmm, how shall he take care of the church of God? Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must have a good report of them that are without, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. Likewise, must the deacons be grave, not double-tongued, not given to much wine, not greedy or a filthy lucre, filthy lucre, holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. Let these also first be proved. That word proved means tested. Huh. Then, then let them use the office of a deacon being found blameless. Hmm. So we see here, as we are being sanctified, as we are growing in the things of God, as we are entering into different offices in the ministry, that there is a standard. And so, because there is a standard in place, see, I was, you know, it kind of threw me, you know, as I'm having this conversation about this brother wanting to meet this other lady, you know, for just for no other instance than for your them to hook up. I'm like, you know, Deacon, uh, I think you probably shouldn't do that. And I'm not going to be a party to it. Because you're not going to be, your, 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 your situation not going to be on my slate that I was the reason why it happened. But, you know, that goes back to, okay, well, what were the church leaders thinking? Because, you know, just on this casual conversation, you know, how did, how did he become the person to put in the office of a deacon? Because we don't go by this standard. You know, like I said, it was, they, they, they come about four or five Sundays. They seem like they're going to stay around. Let's make them a deacon. We need somebody to cut the grass anyway. Uh. -uh. <sighs> so we're talking about becoming a vessel unto honor. We're talking about sanctifying ourselves. Being a vessel that God can use. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So let's look at the Apostle Paul. We're about to wrap this thing up here. For the Apostle Paul, you know, because we're, we're looking at examples in the word of God of people who have sanctified themselves, have set themselves apart, and God used them. Amen? And I know you want to be used by God. I know I want to be used by God. So let's look at what it takes. Let's see what the criteria is so that we're not disqualified. Because many times we're saying, well, I'd like to be, I'd like to be used by God. And then, you know, well, Lord, why don't you use me? And the Lord's saying, uh, get in the word, find out. If you, do, if you do my word, you'll be accepted. Amen? Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 9, 19th verse. Let's look at the Apostle Paul. Hallelujah. We're talking about becoming vessels unto honor, sanctifying ourselves, becoming vessels that God can use. Amen? Amen? 
Repeat this after me. Say, I am becoming a vessel that God can use. Lord, use me. I'm ready. I'm sanctifying myself. I'm being cleansed. I'm making myself ready. Use me, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We are becoming vessels that God can use. Hallelujah. And we're going to go all the way down to the 27th verse, and then I think we're going to come back through the living, uh, New Living Translation because it says it a little better, in my opinion. It says, For I do this thing willingly. I have a reward, but if against my will a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me, what is my reward then? Verily, that when I preach the gospel, I may, t I may make the gospel of Christ without change, that I abuse not my power in the gospel. For though I be free from all men, yet I have made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. And unto the Jews I became as them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. To them that are without the law, as without the law, being not without the law to God, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without the law. To the weak I became as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. And this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be partaker thereof with you. Know ye not, they which run in a race, but one receiveth the prize. So run that ye may obtain. And every man that strive for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now, that, now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. But we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainty, certainly. So fight I, not as one that beateth the air. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest by any means when I have preached, to others, I may, myself should be a castaway. So we're going to pick this up and, and read it here because I think it's going to give us a little more revelation here over in All right. Nineteenth verse. And I think you'll get a little bit more out of it. Listen closely. Even though I am a free man with no master, I have become a slave to all people to bring many to Christ. When I was with the Jews, I lived like a Jew to bring the Jews to Christ. When I was with those who followed the Jewish law, I too lived under the law. Even though I am not subject to the law, I did this so I could bring to Christ those who are under the law. When I am with the Gentiles who do not follow the Jewish law, I too live apart from the law so that I can bring them to Christ. But I do not ignore the law of God. I obey the law of Christ. When I am with those who are weak, I share their weakness, for I want to bring the weak to Christ. Yes, I try to find common ground with everyone doing everything I can to save some. I do everything to spread the good news and share in its blessings. Do not realize, do you not realize that in a race everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize. So run to win. All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away. But we do it for an eternal prize. So I run with purpose in every step. I am not just shadow boxing. I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be.
disqualified. Can somebody say amen? amen? So, you know, we see here through the Apostle Paul that, you know, he had a lifestyle before people. He had a reputation before people. Now, of course, Paul, in his early beginnings, you know, he was a hit man. You know, he was one of the official members of the rock band. He was there with Stephen. Stephen didn't, wasn't too happy to see Paul. You know, but Stephen still saw the glory of God. Amen. But you know what? Even in that, in Paul's beginnings, God was still able to use him. Amen. Amen. So what do we take away from this? We take away from this that no matter where you started off at, does not have to be the place where you end up at. Amen? Amen? Just because you find yourself in a certain situation, in a certain place, in a certain uh, uh, circumstance, does not mean you have to stay there. Because Jesus has come to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. Amen? Amen. So we want to keep that in mind as we are becoming vessels unto honor, becoming vessels that God can use. Amen? And let's see, we've got one more thing. Okay. Now listen, Jesus, Jesus didn't run game on folks. Jesus wasn't trying to mack nobody. He wasn't trying to mack a woman at the well. He was talking about godly purpose and godly things. Amen? And so we want to carry ourselves in such a way. You know, Jesus wasn't married. They said, well, why didn't Jesus get married? You know, he said, because he had his flesh in check. That, can't be this, that, that cannot be said of many of us. We need to be married. I know I need to be married. Because, you know, I don't want to be, I, don't, I, you know, I certainly ain't going to end up like some of these Catholic boys, you know, chasing these little boys around and stuff. You ain't doing that. Make it plain, brother. Make it plain. I will, thank you. Preach on. I will, thank you. So, God has already established something for us that we can do something with our fleshly desires. Amen? And within the content of marriage, it's all great. It's all good. Amen? That's why he set it up for us. Amen? Because he knew it was going to, you know, man, you see that fine woman? Man, you, you can't just, you, you, no, you just can't do anything. You know, we have, we, have, we have to conduct ourselves a certain way. So God said, look, I need, to, I, I need to go ahead and hit this off at the pass. I need to go ahead and put this in the right parameters so these folks don't get in trouble. Because, you know, it's bad enough they, done, they ate the fruit and they done messed everything up. Well, we've got to repair this right now. Amen. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Just a little humor there. It's okay to laugh. Tell your face you're happy. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But we are becoming vessels unto honor. We are becoming vessels that God can use. Amen. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.